Hi folks, I am in Boston and I am with uh, Luke Colby from Triton Space Technologies. So this is awesome. I've actually emailed with Luke for a few years now. I'm up here to do the helical tour, a card to that video here. But Luke said you should come by, see what we do, legit space technology. You want to tell us about what you do? Sure, yeah. So uh, Triton Space Technologies is a uh, consulting engineering and prototype manufacturing company. Uh, we do a lot of space-related uh, stuff, uh, rocket propulsion-related hardware. Um, uh, some of our customers are the big names that you hear in, in space. Um, and so we do a lot of uh, engineering for them and um, we have brought prototype manufacturing in-house, so we have a couple of CNC machines here that we can show you, um, and that allows us to uh, make the turnaround time be a lot faster on the work that we do for customers. Right, so like this is so cool. I mean, obviously, I think everyone's been into space lately with the news from SpaceX. Uh, we had the chance to go see scaled composites last year in California, and ironically, that was your... Yes, it's kind of where you cut your teeth, right? It is, absolutely, yeah. So I worked for 10 years uh, as the lead propulsion engineer on Spaceship Two. Um, and so developed a lot of the feed system and valve and, and injector and all the kinds of things that uh, flow the, the rocket propellant into the engine for Spaceship Two. So I've been here for an hour. We've just been catching up and talking. And uh, you know, the unfortunate thing is there's so much stuff that is um, protected. But it is nice to see, you know, whether it was our tour with Scaled or whether it's meeting guys like Luke. Like it's becoming more and more open. I think there's a, a benefit that you know we all get to see and understand it. But yeah. like it is so cool. And actually. Um, if you guys don't watch Smarter Every Day, you should watch his video on the, I think it's, is it Binaural? Yes, the Binaural Audio yeah. tour that he did of the, of the Falcon 9 launch, or Falcon Heavy launch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was incredible. I've never been to a launch, but I have to think that's the best surrogate for not having been there. That really just shakes you to the core. Yes. The closest thing for me would have been, um, you know, hearing some F-15s or F-16s hit the afterburners at a 4th of July thing or sure. something. Sure, yes. But it's, it's very similar. Pretty and, cool. and actually, I can tell you that, like, I was actually there at that particular launch, yeah. just a few miles away from where they were filming that. Um, and, and it does do a wonderful job of capturing what it was like to be there. So if you haven't seen it, definitely go check out the video. It's great. But yeah. so again, we're here, we're in Boston and, and you're not a one man band. You've got some employees. No, I have, have some people that are, yeah. But still, you're, you're doing this. I mean, you are yes. Triton. And, yes. and if you look around, it's cool because he's got the Tormach and he's now kind of moving up to, he's got a Haas here and then, mm -hmm. and then the Samsung SL20. Um, and then there's some manual stuff as well. Yep. Where do you want to start? We're actually just getting ready to cut apart. It's going to be part of a valve that we're building for a customer and give you a chance to see, uh, see the Samsung in action. So you guys know I've, I've been around the Samsungs before. Um, every, th every time I hear another data point about them, it is a good thing. Um, what I think is so cool about some of the products that I've already seen here today with Luke is that it is, in, in some extent, your whole business models, and I'm gonna use my words here, but fail fast, fail cheap. This idea of bringing a part and changing it from a six or nine month lead time to yep. a lower price with a kind of an off the shelf functionality and you've got products here where you're doing them in aluminum and then you do it in a stainless and then you may do it in an ink canal. Correct. Like just yes. owning yeah. that chain. Right. Uh, so actually I could actually show you one of our products real quick. This is a high pressure uh, valve that we uh, have developed. Um, it's uh, 3000 PSI rated, has a one inch inlet. So it's a pretty large diameter high flow rate valve uh, that's used for rocket applications. This okay. one was uh, designed to uh, help with the startup sequence of a rocket engine. Uh, like the SpaceX Merlin, for example. Um, and so uh, our competitors in the industry that would make a valve like this, you typically would be looking at you know, $25,000 and about 30 weeks to get one. Um, ours is on the order of 9,000 and we ship them you know, next, next day. So um, yeah, it's, it, the, the whole idea is trying to bring that time scale down to a more reasonable uh, sort of wor way because everyone is used to um, domestically shopping on Amazon and, and you know, and a McMaster, quick turnaround, right. McMaster car, exactly. Uh, there isn't really an equivalent for aerospace. Right. Um, and there are a lot of good reasons for that, but we're trying to sort of fill a niche where um, we're able to turn products around for customers a lot faster than the typical 24 to 30 week lead right. time that you get from some of the more traditional right. vendors. I can't imagine a project where you're doing six month lead time on a part that, that when there is an alternative to have it within a week or two. Right. Oh my gosh. Exactly. <laughs> so, so this is, this is a, a, a valve for a turbo pump spin start system. So basically all rocket engines use these very powerful pumps 
um, that uh, basically take the propellant from the rocket from the big uh, tanks that you see yeah. and feed it into the engine at high pressure. The three engines that you see at the bottom of the space shuttle um, that are run off the big external tank, the big orange tank, uh -huh. um, those engines, uh, their turbo pumps have something like 75,000 shaft horsepower and they're only about <laughs> yay big. And they can empty an Olympic sized swimming pool in like 25 seconds. So wow. really incredible things, but you need something to get them started. In the first second before there's actually combustion taking place, uh, they're usually spun up to speed using okay. high pressure helium. Okay. And so this is an example for another customer, not, not the space shuttle man engine, but a, a similar kind yeah. of thing uh, where uh, this valve opens, allows high pressure helium to spin the pump up just as it's getting started. Got it. So, so you figuratively and literally are sort of priming, priming yes, it, getting you're it up and priming going. the pump essentially, right, right, right exactly. Right. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. And so, you, you did the design yes, work and yes. this is, so, this so is your product. this and this is a product that we sell. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and uh, show making a part on the Samsung lathe. These, this lathe is a, it's a great machine. We're very happy with it. Um, one of the things that's nice about these machines um, is they're based on Morisaki castings, so they're very heavy. It's like 9,000 pounds of cast iron, um, and it's very rigid. It's great for the high-strength stainless steels right. and canals that we right. use in aerospace. You'll actually so, machine ink canal in yes, this? machine yeah. ink canal, machine 17.4, stainless steel. Um, works great. We, we actually, uh, not that long ago, made a big uh, injector assembly for a 250,000 pound thrust liquid rocket engine with big, you know, 24 inch diameter stainless steel parts. Uh, made most of those on this lathe, really? and uh, it it works great. And, wow. uh, able to hold you know two tenths tolerances. Right. Um, that was so, gonna be my question too. Yeah. It's, so it's, you know, aerospace parts tend to be high tolerance, very precise. Uh, really uh, nice surface finishes are required. Yep. And when you're turning big, heavy pieces of stainless like that, it's very difficult to not have some sort of chatter that affects the surface finish. Right. And so having a really mi rigid machine like this for making. Um, precise uh, tolerance uh, rocket engine parts right. is, is great. And, and it's a fantastic machine for the price. Right, so. I was just to say the price is hard yeah. to beat. And we were taking a look at some photos of past work he's done where, you know, that's the big difference is it's one thing for you to lose your shirt, you know, because the material is expensive or hard to get. But here, I mean, it may be one piece of material that's multi-thousand dollars and the work that they were doing, whether it's small drills or small holes or, I hate to use the word, but slotting because you have to. I mean. You, yeah. you got to have confidence in what you're what you're, what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I believe he said he's using. You, I know you're using SolidWorks and HSMWorks for the we mill are. and for the lathe as yes, well. Yes, yeah. So we, cool. we program everything in HSMWorks uh, in SolidWorks. Sweet. Um, and the post processors uh, for the Fana control yeah, um, that worked. they've developed are great. Cool. Their post processor for the Haas is even better. Really happy with their support of Haas, but obviously they have a very tight relationship yeah. with Haas. And, yeah. and so yeah, we've been very happy with cool. uh, that software. Yeah. You know, having gotten to know Luke a lot better, even just in the last few hours, you know, um, sounds like we have similar paths. I am no rocket scientist, but, uh, you know, growing a small business and then bringing it to this where he's got processes here on how they run, you know, they don't do production, but how they do the handoff um, and, and, and convey the critical tolerances and tasks and priorities. And, you know, yep. Luke was kind of lamenting that this, you know, he doesn't really run this machine anymore, and that's a good thing. Right. <laughs> yes, but. but. <laughs> While this lathe was cutting, it was absolutely silent and it was really impressive. And Luke was really modest about walking through some of the parts that he made and showing them off. But it really blew me away because he's got to have that cam side down, just absolute pat, really good speeds and feeds, the right tooling. And he's got to have confidence that he's not going to ruin incredibly expensive pieces of raw material. How long have you had the lathe? Uh, it's about a year old. Okay. Did you look at a lot of, you know, I mean, obviously there's the Haas, there's yeah, the... Yeah, so, so we looked uh, very seriously at a uh, ST15. Yep. Because uh, a lot of the valve parts we make have two and a half di inch oh. diameter parts. So being able to have a, a lathe with a two and a half inch through bore mm -hmm. um, for bar feeding uh, would be great. Um, and so we looked at uh, Haas, um, but ultimately, we, uh, we looked at several other machines and uh, we actually got to see one of these cutting stainless, which oh, really? is what we do mostly sure, sure. Um, at another uh, machine shop. And yep. the comparison, there was just no comparison oh, really? because the higher it's rigidity the box of this ways. machine, yeah, yeah, the boxway machine right. is just, it was I mean, the right choice. For when us, I first so. saw them at IMTS, I ended up just talking to a guy, ironically from Southern Connecticut, 
huge yeah. manufacturer. I want, they had a huge shop and they were moving it between Texas or something strange, but it was kind of one of those things where you asked enough question and he was just like, no, 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 it's a real deal. They're, they're great machines and uh, they, they are definitely at a um, lower price point than the equivalent uh, yeah. Morisaki. Or, yeah, sure, you know, sure. So. Yeah, and the um, footprint's a good, decent size. Yeah, it's a it's a great little machine. It's it's uh, it's perfect for the kind of work that we do. Um, and so and so, what's the throughboard? Two two inch. So it's two point six. Oh, it is. So, this, yeah. this has a, so this has a two point six three or something. Got it. Uh, throughboard, and so we're able to bar feed um, stock right. uh, through it. And you know, we don't actually have a bar feeder. We just use a, a one of those pulling tools that yeah. will come in and grab it, uh, open the chuck, pull it out, and uh, close the chuck again. Um, but you can but stick a 30-inch stick yeah, in there, and absolutely. do you have to have a, a cylinder sleeve support it? Yeah, so you have to have a sleeve support for yeah. it, but, um, but yeah, absolutely. Oh, do you normally keep a chuck system on, or do you ever move to a, do you have uh, a Royal system or anything else? So, so we actually basically use the hydraulic chuck, and then we'll use a small, like, 5C collet um, insert into the chuck for smaller parts. Okay. Um, obviously, if you're going to do a two-op or three-op part, it's harder to do that to maintain concentricity. But yeah. most of what we do, we don't have to worry about that. Crack the doors. Yep. We're done. Yeah, and uh, part is done. We'll go ahead and... Okay. Take a look. It's it's a small part, but sweet. Oh, look, the finishes are great. Yeah, and you nice said that's 17.4. Yep. And the temper is that mean it's been hardened to a certain? Yes. Degree? Yeah. So this you, is H1150. So it's a it's a hardened. Uh, any idea what it would be hardened to, in the Rockwell? It's like 45. Oh, okay. It's pretty hard. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sweet. Yeah. Nice on the through hole. Wow. Yeah. So uh, we use uh, that guy. We also have a, a Haas VF2 SS um, uh, with uh, fourth axis, um, and you know we also use uh, like a Pearson. Oh yeah, no, awesome! Uh, Look at that Pearson pallet system. Uh, it's just a blank right now, but uh, um, we have uh, in our storage area other pallets that we've used. Yeah. And, yeah. So it's, actually, I'll give, I'll give Luke a shout out too. He's got some pretty good pictures on their Instagram. Uh, yeah. We can't do a cards to Instagram, so check out the video description. But uh, I remember seeing some really gnarly pictures, especially what you're doing with the... Do you know what fourth axis that is? So this is the HRT 210. Okay. Yep. And uh, so we've had to do some interesting jobs where we actually built custom fixture plates to tilt the, uh, the fourth axis yep. to allow us to drill holes in an injector uh, for a rocket engine. So three, three plus one uh, plus one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah, so, but we're very happy with both machines and uh, they, they do what we need them to do, so. And you were, and you were talking about, well, how th big were those holes in stainless you were drilling? Oh yeah, so, so we were drilling uh, 49 thousandths holes uh, about an inch deep um, yeah. in some of these parts. And uh, so, uh, really challenging uh, holes to do, but um, with 1,000 PSI through spindle yeah. coolant, um, right. it's amazing. Um, with, with, uh, with the drills, the drills are from uh, Micron. Okay. Um, and uh, the, with that 1,000 PSI coming out the tip, it's able to blow the it chips works. out and it works. It's incredible. I remember when I yeah. asked for fees and speeds and I was like, well, do I peck or not? And they're like, you never no, peck. No, you don't peck. You just, you and, just go. And the first time you hit oh, that man. button and you just watch this teeny tiny drill that's so long, it just yeah. shouldn't be there. And, and it just goes right in and comes right back out, no problem. It's, You'll it's, never know. If, I mean, you can't even incredible. begin to read the load meter to see if it's broken. You just wait so to it's, see. It's either going to work or you're going to buy another $150 drill. So. Yep. <laughs> but it, they, they are amazing, and it's incredible when they work well. So, Very yeah. cool. We have an old uh, 15L Slant Pro that we used uh, early on. Uh, most of what we do these days is obviously yeah. on the Samsung. But I've always told people it's okay if you outgrow it that's a yes. good that's a good sign that's right that's a good yes. sign that is a good sign yep. yeah <laughs> absolutely what's up with uh, ban ba uh new bandsaw old bandsaw oh, this is an, uh, another example old bandsaw we're, ah. we're actually selling both of these got it got um, it because yeah, i say the ellis looks familiar yes. <laughs> we, we have an ellis bandsaw <laughs> yeah uh yeah so it's it's great uh, yeah. uh it's it's just what we need uh for the kind of stock prep that we do yeah. so yep uh, let's see, in the back room here, uh, we do a lot of assembly. This, this space is uh, basically empty at the moment. We're sort of in between projects, but um, you know, we'll assemble uh, hardware uh, back here. Um, this, you know, this is a valve assembly we're building for a customer that um, 
We're oh, waiting wow. on a couple of pieces. So it's going to go together, something like that. So that's a um, product that we're working on for a customer. So do you end up doing you know, a lot of servicing for either cosmetic or, or requirement needs? on? Yeah, tasks? so, so uh, depends, on the, depends on the application. But in particular, the, the thing that we're most concerned about um, is surface finish for seals. Uh, because okay. in rocket applications, you've got high pressure um, gases and liquids that mm -hmm. have to seal it anywhere between 500 PSI all the way up to 8,000 PSI. Mm -hmm. And so those surface finishes have to be really nice. And so we, we do our best to get the surface finish right out of the machine. Yep. Um, and then we'll um, polish or lap okay. uh, surfaces as needed. Um, don't, don't laugh, but there's obviously no gasketing at those PSIs, right? It's, it's metal yeah, and metal? The, well, actually, there, there, there are um, O-rings or spring energized seals um, I, actually, I don't have one here I could show you, but, but um, basically at those high pressures, um, what, what you use is a seal that basically it's, it's like a Teflon, it looks like a C, okay. and then there's a coil spring inside it. And so that, that coil spring basically deflects the two sort of floppy walls okay. out, and they touch precision polished surfaces okay. and create a seal. Interesting. Um, yeah, and so it, the, the energy of the spring pushing out um, creates the initial seal, and then because it's sort of a C shape, pressure gets in there and pushes out as well. So it's like the higher the pressure gets, the better seal. the seal. Yeah. So It's actually really funny, but we just did a tour uh, of a shop in Chicago that had these amazing DMG machines. And it was the first time somebody explained something that's now so obvious, which is an HSK tool holder comes in, it's actually dual contact, but there are uh, contact from the inside. So as your RPMs increase, those pushing out and increasing your clamping force. Whereas with a traditional Cat 40, um, and you're clamping on that pull stud, as you increase your RPMs, it's just like a lathe chuck that will reduce its gripping power at the higher RPMs. So yeah, uh, same, same, same principle. General idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've got to take yep. these rocket topics and bring them down to my, <laughs> yeah, my basic machining yes. level. What is this? So this is a propellant tank. Um, Serious? Yeah, so, so uh, actually this was just set up for some water flow testing that we were doing okay. um, uh, earlier this week. Um, it's all been cleaned up, but uh, basically this is uh, the head end of a small rocket engine that we're what? working on for a customer. Um, and so the rest of the combustion chamber uh, comes uh, down here. Uh -huh. um, and that, so that would have nitrous oxide in it? This would have nitrous oxide in it. Uh, here in the shop, obviously, okay. it's just got deionized water. Yeah, <laughs> but when we're, we take we're, this out to a test site, right, right. Uh, we would we would be flying with nitrous oxide. We're, we're effectively so. like in we're Woburn, but we're very yes. near like a very populated area of Boston. This we, is not where I are. think of. Yes, um, no, and and so yeah, most of what we do is build the hardware, and then it goes somewhere else to actually get tested. Can we you test in the northeast? Uh, there are a couple of places oh, in yeah? the northeast where you can okay. test. Um, there's some places up in Maine got it. on like old uh, uh, Air, Air Force bases. Yeah. things like that. Uh, there's, there's, there was an abandoned rock quarry in, in Sudbury, I think, that we did some testing um, at. So yeah, but but it is absolutely a challenge. Like right. if you want right. to, if you want to test loud rocket engines, you generally have to be further away from civilization than we are here. Like so. the Mojave Desert. Like the Mojave <laughs> Desert. Yes. This very much reminds me of the Daytron interface, which is really a whole new way of looking at how you interact with the CNC machine controller as well as with uh, your part itself with this idea of a camera system, you know, kind of a whiz, uh, kind of an interactive uh, control interface where you can move around, navigate, probe, etc. And it's actually the first time I've seen a Glowforge in person. They were uh, quite the vaporware story for, for a couple of years. The light's blinking, so basically uh, when, when it's ready to go, you just push that button, and now it's going to come over. Oh, and, it's quick. Yep. Uh-oh. Well, I guess I didn't line it up perfectly, but... Interesting that the tube travels with the y-axis. Yeah, it's avoids the way of mirrors, huh? Yeah, yeah. So um, there. Uh, let's see. You can't really see it. There is the, the mirror, like um, it's there. There is a mirror over here that um, you know bounces it over yeah. to the head. Um, right, but it's one less axis of so yes. degree of freedom. Yes. Yep. What's the material that you buy it as a so we'll, anodized? Yeah, so we'll buy a piece of uh, aluminum uh, uh, plate that's already been pre-anodized to the color that we're looking yeah. for. Um, and this uh, actually, this particular plaque is is just we're just doing this to show you. But um, this this, as you can see, the thing we're printing is meant for a slightly different piece of aluminum. But uh, I got you. Um, got you. Basically, the idea is that you would set up. Um, the piece of aluminum is already the size you want it to be. Yeah. And then this will come and, and mark the right. uh, uh, 
uh, the aluminum. And, and basically, the laser is not powerful enough to etch the aluminum. All it's doing mm, is, sure. yeah. is burning off the anodizing. But you, uh, the, the end result is you have a, a, a nice piece of anodized oh, yeah, aluminum with, with white lettering. Yeah, so it looks good. Well, but for folks, if, if folks want to do something like this at home, can you buy that anodized aluminum from like a McMaster? Sure. You yeah. Can. Yeah. Absolutely. So there, there are. Uh, I think. I think we get ours from a, one of the metal suppliers we deal with. But um, yeah, there are definitely uh, places. I think you could even find it on eBay where you got buy pre-anodized pre aluminum. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Um, so you can see. Um, Looks that, great. Yeah. Other than you, the fact that we uh, obviously used the wrong. Look at that 8,000 yeah. PSI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, we uh, obviously we used the wrong piece of aluminum, yeah, yeah. but uh, you get the idea. Right. So it's a, yeah. it's a tool. So it's, awesome. it's a great little tool. Um, obviously, you can use it for many other things. Uh, we tend to just use it for that kind of stuff. It, it, you know, it's fun too. Like it'll cut out wood and plastics yeah, and sure. you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, it comes into the packaging. It's a really nice Pelican case with a pick and pluck foam and then and then you've got the label on it here. And this may be what actually gets FedEx to the customer. Yeah, yeah that's right. cool. So they will get a, they'll get a Pelican case like that. Yep. Cool. This is what I love about life. Like, this is so cool. It's been awesome to see someone else. You know, Luke comes at this with a very different, you know, like machining is a necessary evil to part of your story, right? Yes. But then it's also fun because he was like, ah, I listened to the, the Business of Machining podcast and I heard you guys talking about TIE Fighters, which is just... Yes, that's super yes. cool. Yeah, we, so we were joking a, a couple of weeks ago before we heard that podcast, we should machine our own TIE Fighter. Yeah. That would be fun. Like, right. it would be a fun project. And I think you should just so. develop an ION engine. Yeah, we should. <laughs> we, should we should work on that. Yes. Awesome. Yep. Uh, well, Luke, thank you very much for showing us around. Super yep. cool and, and awesome. Really cool to see uh, the success with Triton. All right. Well, thanks, man. Thanks very much. Take care.